Hello, and a very warm welcome to our Lenti Royal YouTube channel. Harry and Meghan are axing 15 staff and closing their Buckingham Palace office. It is the surest sign yet that the couple and their son Archie are unlikely ever to return to the UK to live. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex broke the news to their team in person in January, following the announcement that they were stepping down as senior working royals. While one or two may be absorbed back into the royal household, most are now negotiating redundancy packages. They are the latest casualties of Harry and Meghan's decision to move to North America and make their fortunes outside the royal family. Last night Buckingham Palace said it did not comment on staffing matters, but it is understood senior royals, including the Queen, Prince Charles, and Prince William are aware of the office closure and redundancies. A source told the LNT Royal Channel, it's given their decision to step back, an office at Buckingham Palace is no longer needed. While the details are still being finalized and efforts are being made to redeploy people within the royal household, unfortunately there will be some redundancies. Among those to lose their jobs are the couple's newly appointed private secretary, Fiona McKillwam although she is on secondment from the Foreign and Commonwealth Office and is likely to be found in a role in Whitehall, and their hugely experienced communications chief, Sarah Latham. Harry's long-standing program coordinator Clara Lauren, who was so well regarded by the prince that she was asked to hand Meghan her bouquet in church on her wedding day, will go. As well as Miss Latham who previously worked for the Obamas and was Hillary Clinton's senior campaign advisor, her deputy, Assistant Communications Secretary Marnie Gaffney, is understood to be leaving. A much-loved and long-serving member of Buckingham Palace press staff, she played a major role in supporting Harry on his military work and organized his and Meghan's hugely successful official tours to Australia and Africa. The Queen made her a member of the Royal Victorian Order because of her devoted service. The other press officer to lose her job is Julie Burley who worked for Harry, William and Kate on their successful mental health campaign heads together. The assistant communications secretary was headed hunted by Harry and Meghan, and led the press team on his Invictus games. She has also managed the media side of many of the couple's domestic engagements and patronages. David Watkins, poached from Fashion House Burberry in August as the couple's social media expert, is also out. The source insisted that Wall's Mexits had come as a complete shock to the team, most accept their fate. As the Duke and Duchess have a small team, less than 15 people. The team are very loyal to the Sussexes and understand and respect the decision they have taken, as the source said. As they are all close and supporting each other. The team are busy helping to set their royal highnesses up for the future and working on a series of final engagements. It is understood that this includes the Mountbatten Festival of Music at the Royal Albert Hall on March 7, which will be Harry's last engagement as Captain General of the Royal Marines. He and Meghan are also expected to attend the Commonwealth Day service on March 9. One or two other engagements are being scheduled before the couple return to Canada to embark on their new life. When they announced their decision to step back in early January, Harry and Meghan insisted they would be splitting their time between the UK and North America. But this latest move suggests that any trips back to the UK will be limited. One source said, so I do think they will be back a little bit. They genuinely do plan to keep their patronages and maintain that work in the UK. Some of the outgoing staff started working with Harry long before his marriage to Meghan. One royal source told the LNT Royal Channel, I don't think it will come as a surprise to anyone that these have been incredibly trying circumstances for their team, who have experienced some very difficult times of late. They are all good people, very loyal and brilliant at their jobs, and everyone feels incredibly sorry for them. Another insider made clear that the couple's decision to hire a team of U.S. based agents and publicists many of whom worked for Meghan when she was an actress, had made life incredibly difficult for their palace staff. 
the couple have been organizing private engagements and briefings with the U.S. team, and hired a Canadian designer to create a new website without any involvement from the royal advisors. This has led to a number of embarrassing blunders. There are several instances when advice was clearly been given to them by the palace team, and wasn't listened to, with the source revealed. They have done the best they possibly could against the backdrop of multiple international advisors, publicists, and high-profile friends. Harry and Meghan's team are so loyal, probably to a fault sometimes. They are firefighting for the couple while knowing they are about to lose their jobs. Efforts are being made to redeploy some people. But in truth that will be a small fraction of the total staff. So the small team will continue to be employed privately in London to mastermind Harry's new eco-friendly travel initiative, Travelist, launched last year. It is thought that the redundancies will be concluded by the time Harry and Meghan's transitions and stepping down as senior royals is formally concluded, this is likely to be around mid to late March, when they return for their final official duties. In other news, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle will not return to the UK to celebrate Prince Andrew's 60th birthday, but will send a gift and a video message to be played at his party, a source has claimed. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have been residing in Canada since they quit as senior members of the royal family last month. British media correspondent Neil Sean told Fox News, it is an open secrets that the couple declined the invite to celebrate Harry's uncle's birthday. It's not very nice for the Queen as, whatever people say and think. Andrew is still her son, and she wanted her close family around her, she said. The reason given is that they already have commitments on the day, but also plan to send a gift, or card and a video message to be played at the party. In November it was reported the monarch has scrapped plans to host a party for Prince Andrew to mark his 60th birthday in the wake of the Jeffrey Epstein scandal. The Duke of York was sacked from his royal duties following a now infamous Newsnight interview. The Queen is said to be privately supportive of her second son, but also is deeply frustrated that the scandal is overshadowing the rest of the family's work. It is believed Prince Andrew will still walk his daughter Princess Beatrice down the aisle at her wedding at the Chapel Royal in St. James's Palace on May 29. The pair share a close relationship, and her sister Eugenie will also play a role in the wedding. It was reported last week that the Queen has offered to hold the wedding reception at Buckingham Palace to give her granddaughter, as morale boosts. The Queen is said to be privately supportive of her second son, but also is deeply frustrated that the scandal is overshadowing the rest of the family's work. It is believed Prince Andrew will still walk his daughter Princess Beatrice down the aisle at her wedding at the Chapel Royal in St. James's Palace on May 29. The pair share a close relationship, and her sister Eugenie will also play a role in the wedding. It was reported last week that the Queen has offered to hold the wedding reception at Buckingham Palace to give her granddaughter, as morale boosts. Another report. Meghan Markle, is seen in fits of giggles in a handed snap shared by British Vogue. Editor Edward Innan Fulcrum behind the scenes of their forces for change issue last year. The Duchess of Sussex, surprised and in full with an impromptu celebration to mark their collaboration on the September edition, in an unseen video shared last night. She handed the fashion designer a sparkly party hat and horns as a thank you for agreeing to let her be the first ever guest editor of the magazine. In the two and a half minute clip posted to the Sussex Royal Instagram page, the duo called up the women Megan selected to be on her front cover. And in full also praised the Duchess for her editor's eyes, claiming that I've never seen anything like it. You were so thorough from beginning to end. Yes. The video, which was filmed in London in August last year, begins with an in full revealing he received a text from Meghan asking him to help her with her smart works project. He recalled being so excited as he walked into Kensington Palace, to which Meghan replied, so oh my gosh, Zaninful said, as I was like, lovely to meet you, Duchess, and you were like, call me Megan.
after he agreed to work with her on her charity project. Megan told how she decided to see if she could push it just a little bit more and ask him if he was willing to let her guest edit an edition of Vogue. Please support Growing LNT World channel by subscribe channel, like and share videos hour. Your support is the motivation for us to produce better videos. Don't stop.